and might get close. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. I've got an intriguing test today. I'm gonna hit a whole bunch of shots with my seven iron with different varying club speed numbers. I'm going to range the club speed from 70 miles an hour all the way up to 95 miles an hour. And it's gonna be really interesting to take a look at the different performance factors to really see what club speed influences. I do anticipate the more club speed, the further the distance, the less club speed, the shorter distance, but I'm really intrigued to take a look at the height of the shots, the amount of spin that's on the ball, the landing angle, and the ball speed, and also dispersion, because we already know it's important with an iron that you want to hit the ball straight as well. So it's gonna be really interesting to, to test that. I'm gonna try and hit between 70 miles an hour, 75, 80, 85, 90, and 95 miles an hour with a seven iron to take a look at the numbers and kind of see what we can find out. Let's hit some shots and take a look at some numbers. That wasn't, dang it. It's really hard for me to swing slow here, but I'm doing it for the, doing it for you, for you viewers out here to really collect some data to take a look at some slower swing speed numbers. Look at that, spot on 70 miles an hour. It's not that hard. <laughs> well, 90 miles an hour is a push. Now, I mentioned I was gonna try and get to 95 miles an hour. Let's see if we can get there, but this is, this is gonna be interesting. These swings will probably look a little bit out of control. I might get close. Nope. Nice <laughs> 3.8. Okay, so let's first talk about how hard it was for me to swing at both 70 miles an hour and 95 miles an hour with a seven iron. It took a lot for me to slow my golf swing down, but we got there. But at the other end of the spectrum, 95 miles an hour, I actually never have swung my seven iron at 95 miles an hour. We got my average to 92.9. So it was pretty close, but I couldn't quite get there. Unfortunately, I can't swing my seven iron at 95 miles an hour. But we've got a good enough data here to talk about the differences in club speed and how it influences an iron. So I was hitting with my seven iron. My seven iron's got 34 degrees of loft on it. It's a very, very traditional lofted seven iron. So let's first start off. That's the nice thing with TrackMan is we're able to order the numbers from highest to lowest. So let's first take a look and see what that club speed number was. Uh, so we'll notice at 70 miles an hour, I was at 70.3, 75, 75.3, 80, 81.4, 85, 85.3, 90, 90.4, and 95 miles an hour at 92.9. So this is pretty close. I'm not perfect. I didn't quite get it on the number, but this is going to be good enough to educate you all on what the influence of club speed will be when you're hitting an iron. So. So let's first touch on ball speed. When I was swinging the fastest, I was able to generate the highest amount of ball speed at 133.8. The slowest speed was at 100.8 with the 70 mile an hour swing. And you can see how it ranges all the way up. The one thing that really kind of interests me is how much more distance and how much more ball speed you, you got with gains of five miles an hour from like 70 to 75 to 80 miles an hour as opposed to 85 to 90 to 95 miles an hour. So if we look here from 70 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour, I picked up 17 miles an hour more ball speed in just 10 miles an hour of club speed. 
if we look here at a, from 85 miles an hour to kind of 95 miles an hour, I only picked up 10 miles an hour more ball speed. So there was kind of a, a limit at, at one point here where I was unable to get even more ball speed to match up with my, my, with my club speed as I was swinging faster and faster. Makes sense, it's harder to hit me with the club face. So definitely notice that that started to kind of trend down a little bit there. If we take a look at launch angle, Let's see if there's a, the same trend going on. You can kind of see at 75 and 70 miles an hour around about 17 degrees, 85 miles an hour at 17 degrees. So it's, it's close, but then you'll notice the ball starts to launch a little bit higher the faster I, I swing. 90 miles an hour and 95 miles an hour gave us the highest launch angle. So it was close. It wasn't perfect with regards to in the order, but very, very, very close with regards to launch angle numbers. The number that was in order was spin rate. So if we look here at spin rate, when I was only swinging at 70 miles an hour, I only generated 4,500 RPMs of spin with the 7 iron. If we notice how it kind of trends up, 75 miles an hour was 40, almost 4,900. 80 miles an hour was 50, almost 5,300. 85 was almost 5,500. And we'll notice here at 95 miles an hour and 90 miles an hour, very, very similar. So that spin rate started to kind of get about the same at the top end of the spectrum there. But we were seeing about 400 RPMs more spin for every five miles an hour more club speed. If we look at carry distance, so this was kind of interesting because once again, we noticed the biggest gains when we made five mile an hour increments for the slower speeds. So we'll notice from 70 to 75 miles an hour, we picked up about 11 yards of carry, picked up 18 yards of carry from 75 to 80, and then another 10 miles an hour from 80 to 85 miles an hour. But then you kind of notice at that 85 to 90 to 95 mile an hour mark, we only really picked up a total of around about 10 or 11 yards overall for the last three different swing speeds. And we can, we'll definitely look at that on the dispersion screen a little bit, how the circles start getting closer together with regards to kind of carry distance and total distance as well. They were getting closer and closer together. We weren't seeing as much of an increase per, per se. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting as I'm testing these clubs was my dynamic loft was very, very consistent across the board. We're talking 21 and a half degrees up to 23 degrees highest with the faster club swing and the kind of lowest with the slowest club swing. Height and landing angle is going to be extremely important to pay attention to. This is, this is for sure going to be a huge, huge um, thing to take away from, from this information here today. When I was only swinging at 70 miles an hour, I was only able to hit the ball 57 feet in the air with a landing angle of 36.8. If we go to the other end of the spectrum, when I was swinging at 95 miles an hour, we're talking 132 feet in the air and a landing angle of 53.2 degrees. And that's, qu that's quite the range. And we notice that trend for the fastest the club speed you have, uh, the higher the landing angle, the higher the height. Uh, and then the slowest the club speed, the lowest the height, the lowest the landing angle. And that's important to, to bring up because you want to work with a club fitter to find yourself a club that is going to help you get that ball to launch a little bit higher and give you a little bit extra height so you have some stopping power on the greens. We'll notice when I started getting to about 80 miles an hour, my landing angle finally got into that 45 plus mark with regards to landing angle and my height was close to 100 feet in the air, about 80 to 85 miles an hour. So that's just showing the importance of speed. More speed is going to generate more spin, more spin is going to generate more height and the ball is going to get up in the air and stop a little bit faster for you there. So we're going to talk about that. So if we look at 70 miles an hour, my carry was 139 to go on 156. At 95 miles an hour, my carry was 192 going on 198. So it only took six yards for the ball to stop on the green for me compared to 17 yards. The, the ball is definitely going to stop on the green a lot faster for you when you have more speed and more spin. I also want to touch on the curve. The curve was really interesting. We'll notice 
70, 75, and 80 miles an hour, very, very limited curve. We're talking on average the curve was below six feet of right to left curve. We'll notice once that speed starts to get up, 85 miles an hour, we're talking about 11 feet of curve to the left, 90 miles an hour, 13 feet of curve to the left, and then 95 miles an hour, 35 feet of curve to the left. I do like to draw the ball a little bit, but we'll just notice how more speed is going to cause more spin to whatever kind of shot that you typically play. So if you play a fade, it's probably going to slice more if you have more speed. If you play a draw, it's probably going to draw more if you have more speed there as well. And then finally, dispersion. So really kind of interesting. Now these are five shots with each, each club. They're all pretty straight overall. But the one takeaway I want to talk about is how we notice there's quite the range from the 70 mile an hour swing to the 75 mile an hour to the 80 mile an hour swing. Those circles are quite far separated. If we look at the final three circles at 85 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, and 95 miles an hour, these circles are very, very close together there, so, so we were seeing limited gains when I started to swing faster. In fact, when I was swinging at 95 miles an hour, I really wasn't picking up that much more distance, and my dispersion got wider from left to right, and that's definitely an important takeaway there too. The faster you swing, the further the ball can get offline there as well. So this was a really interesting test with an iron. I hope to do the same thing with a driver as well, because I think it's very important to talk about driver numbers with regards to club speed as well. But this is just showing the importance of what speed can do to generate the ball to fly a little higher, to give you some stop and power to land on the green, and to generate some spin and also accuracy overall. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. Thanks for watching our content. Bye.